Hey everyone, welcome to another episode of Games According to James. I am James, your usual host, obviously. Today, in this episode, we're going to talk about chess or checkers. Now, not literally, but figuratively. Um, what I mean by that is chess versus checkers is the age-old debate. Which, which is better? Which is more fun? Uh, you have chess, which is complex with all these different strategies, and uh, every type of piece has its own rules, and they move certain ways, they can do certain things. Where checkers, at least the North American version of checkers, or rather straight up American version of checkers, is very straightforward. Everything can do what it can do. They all do the same thing. It's very straightforward, very simple. So essentially what I mean is detailed versus, or not necessarily detailed, but more complex games versus simpler games. Now, everybody has their own preference. Um, I actually like both types depending on exactly what it is I want to play and how much time I have. See, the thing with more complex games is they generally take a longer amount of time to play because there's more rules, there's more strategies, there's more um, little intricate things going on. Whereas simpler games, yeah, you can get a game done relatively quickly. Um, half an hour, hour, where complicated games or complex games could take several hours depending on what you're doing. And it doesn't just apply to things like chess or checkers. It applies to board games, obviously, because they're both considered a board game. Uh, they're also... Uh, it's also applicable to miniature wargaming. It's also applicable to role-playing games. And I'll even cite examples uh, going forward. But in general, it, it's really a matter of preference. Neither is really better than the other. And while chess once you know it may seem relatively simple at its core it's still very complicated I know how to play chess I have beaten players that are better than me but I generally lose to them because they just see the board different they see the strategies differently checkers is while well, simpler there are different rules all around the world unlike the rules we may know in North America um, there's different rules for how you can jump which way you can jump who can jump who so while chess checkers is a simpler game there are some complexities within it but basically what i'm talking about is games at their core chess is a more complex game and che checkers is simpler chess takes longer checkers is quicker and that's just something that tends to filter down through the different game types um like in the board game world, for example, you have games like, again, chess and checkers, but you have games like um, Monopoly, fairly straightforward, can be very cutthroat, but is fairly straightforward. Uh, you have games like game, game of Life. There's no real rules to it. You just spin the dial. You go around the board. Um, and games like Sorry or Trouble, they're, they're all relatively simple games with with they can have a little bit of strategy to them, like, do you want to do this instead of that? That kind of thing. But then you have board games like Risk, which can take hours to play, depending on how you play, and have certain strategies that are better at winning than losing. And it's just a lot more complicated. Um, and games like that, and we've seen in the last number of years, especially with the advent of Kickstarter, all sorts of games coming out. Uh, there's a Ghostbusters game. There's an Aliens game. There's all sorts of board games out there that have been coming out that fall probably more into this complex side because there's all sorts of rules to them. Frankly, a lot of these games I see uh, similar to um, Imperial Assault that Fantasy Flight brought out for Star Wars. I look at that game not so much the skirmish mode, which is almost like a miniature war game, board game, but the campaign side and, and things along those lines. I see games like that almost as a resurrection 
of what D&D used to be like when it first came out. A lot of D&D when it first came out, from what I understand, it wasn't the role-playing game we all know now. It was more of a, a campaign-based board game where you had your board and your miniatures and you had your stats for your characters and everything else. Now, it was customizable, obviously, because you rolled up your characters, but generally speaking, it was a lot of board game work to march through the dungeon and you had a dungeon map. And that's what a lot of these newer uh, board games are like, is you get a character. It may not be custom, but you have your stats for your character. You run this campaign system through it. And at the end result, you either get loot or you get experience or, or whatever it is. And these games tend to be a little more complicated compared to your average board game. Because your average board game, let's face it, was always marketed as a family thing. Because, uh, again, you have your Monopolies, your Game of Lifes, your Saris, your your um, Trouble, and, and things along those lines. But board games can have complexity. Games like Sorry and Monopoly do have some strategy involved. So there's little things there that individuals may have that, oh, I'm not buying anything in that third or fourth uh, side of the board, but I'm going to buy everything in the first two sides because everybody has to go through that whatever it is. So it's not that simple games are easy. By far, they're not. They can test your mind as much as some of the complex ones. Uh, pl pl two people that are very evenly matched at trying to play checkers can be just as intriguing as watching two people who know how to play chess at an equal level. Why? Because you're trying to outthink your opponent. That, that, at the end result, you're always trying to outthink your opponent, whether it's a simple or complex game. And it just how simple or complex is relative. Uh, obviously, I'll, I keep harking, harkening back to chess and checkers because that, that's kind of the baseline I look at as the original war games in a way. You have your map, you have your soldiers, and you go. And compared to each other, one is very simple, one is very complex. And that, again, carries across to other things. Um, as I mentioned, some of the board games in, in role-playing, you, you see the same. <laughs> Excuse me. And there are simpler role-playing games. There are more complicated role-playing games. Uh, for example, uh, the old D6 Star Wars game from West End Games. At its core, was very simple. It was, find your skill, roll a number of D6s, compare it to a difficulty number. Done. Uh, now, within that game, there were complexities. If you were doing multiple skills, you have to less use less dice, what are different modifiers. But at the core of the game, it was very simple. Same with uh, the game Cyberpunk or Mechton Zeta from uh, Artel Saurian Games, the interlock system. It was very simple. It was D10 plus tr stat plus skill that was it and generally speaking everything was an opposed role so in the end of that it was like oh you got to do this okay what what did you get oh uh seven plus seven plus four yeah okay i got an 18 is that good enough or and if there was an opposed role it was the same thing it was die plus stat plus skill you can't really get much simpler than that now some people are probably going to yell at me for this, but D20 itself, at its core, was a fairly simple game. It was a D20 plus stat modifier plus skill modifier. Not much different than Interlock, really. Now, there were a lot of complexities like the old D6 system where if you were just playing a simple game, there wasn't much more you needed to do. However, once you started getting into feats that modified this, that, or the other, that you got into more complexities. But the game at its core was very simple. Now, conversely, to those games, you have games like Rollmaster, where if you're doing certain, doing certain things, you could be rolling on three or four different tables just to see what kind of damage you did to somebody because this weapon does this table type of damage. Oh, you had this kind of crit... And you could be there for five minutes just to figure out how much and what kind of actual damage you did. You have 
a game like Phoenix Command that had a random hit location table with 68 locations, including left hand, right hand, left forearm, right forearm, and it broke it down a lot, and the game itself held quite a bit of detail. And um, I'm going to probably get some other people arguing about this one too. The Palladium system itself it is not that simple to grasp if you're reading it without help. It's a com combined D20 and percentile system. And it, it, it's... Considering that the system itself is built on the back of the company owner's house rule D&D &D rules from the late 70s, it shouldn't be surprising that it, in some ways it is not a simple game. I, I wouldn't... If someone is first getting into role-playing, I would not recommend Palladium. I would say find something simpler to play to get the hang of what role playing is, then give Palladium a try. Or if you know somebody who plays Palladium, have them run you through it so that you have someone to call on when you have issues. Because Palladium is not that easy. And, and those are some of the role playing games in, in, an, in and around the whole idea of chess versus checkers. If I want to play chess, I'm going to play something like Role Master because I want crunch I want a lot of rules detail crunchiness if you will but if I want something simple I'm going to turn to cyberpunk or, or mechton or, or or even star wars d6 because at its core I can just play and roll when I need to and not worry about looking up what does this feat do what does this thing do what does this ability do and just play you can focus more on the play rather than the rules and that's I guess the real key here it depends. If you if you like rules, you're going to want complex. If you want to just play to play, you're going to want simple. And again, it, it comes down to what you really want. And, and really, and, and what kind of time frame you've got. Playing a rules-heavy game takes time because you're always dealing with rules more than freeform playing. And it, it's, it's kind of hard to... to qualify or, or quantify that I guess because if you have the time to play then that's all well and good what many people like myself many 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 people like myself are finding is we just as we got older and out of high school and even out of college we don't have the time to play we had when we were 20 years old we have wives we have families we have jobs we have all sorts of other things pulling us in 10 different directions. So when we want to play, we want to play and get as much bang for our time as we can. And usually, you probably get more bang for your buck out of a simpler game than you will a rules-heavy game because you'll actually feel like you accomplished more playing a simpler game than a rules-heavy game. Just by the very fact that you'll probably do more in an adventure, for example, in a rules light game versus a rules heavy game because it always seems that rules heavy games get bogged down in rules oh I, I want to do this this and this okay well you need to do this 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 whereas if you do that in a real simple I need I want to do this this and this okay roll and away you go excuse me um, and that that's kind of the thing with role-playing games they're funny that way they uh, and there doesn't seem to be an in-between. Palladium might be the closest to an in-between, but generally speaking, it's either they're fairly light or fairly heavy with rules. Now, that can be problematic because you can have rules that have rules for every known situation, and then that one thing it doesn't will just have it fall apart. But then rules light won't have rules to cover certain situations. So you kind of have to go on the fly. That's why Palladium is probably somewhere in between. They, they're, they're missing rules to cover a lot of things, but they have rules that do cover a lot of things. It's, it's confusing at times. And that's in the role-playing aspect. Now, at least in uh, miniature wargaming, it's a little more cut and dried as to what's simple and what's complex. And that's really where it really does depend on how much time you've got. And because it, miniature games take time to set up they take time to tear down they take time to play so if you don't have a lot of time you're not going to be playing 
more rules heavy type games for that reason and it, whether you like them or not if you don't like rules simple then you're not going to play a lot because if you don't have the time to play you're not going to play because you don't want to play simple games you want to play complex games makes it harder to get games in when you don't have the time obviously as i've said repeatedly now even in that sense some companies seem to get it they have simpler versus more complex versions of their own games a good example of this is catalyst games they have battletech or as most of us call it classic battletech which is pretty rules crunchy um especially with movement with hex sides and terrain and um, hit locations and armor and critical hits but then they also have alpha strike which streamlines the movement streamlines how the damage works how criticals work and the game just goes that much faster and i can give you a very good example of what i mean uh, a friend of mine oliver and i years ago played a trinary on trinary game um what that means it's three units of five on each side so 15 uh men battle mechs for those who know what battle tech is per side we played I want to say probably 13 or 14 hours and we weren't done yet because movement was slow combat was slow and it just took that much time and we never finished we ended up calling it a, I think we ended up calling it a draw at the time and we, we were very evenly matched we, we designed our, our our forces that way to be evenly matched so in the end it took 12 or 14 hours to play a game we didn't actually finish we had dead mechs on each side but we still weren't really done conversely a couple two three months ago i played a game of alpha strike with my friends jacob and rob they were up opposition to myself and i played uh four units of five and they played six units of four so that's 20 mechs on one side 24 on the other for 44 mechs almost just shy of 50 percent more pieces on the table versus the game i just previously mentioned we were done in three hours and that's what i mean by simple versus complex if you have time to play one or the other and, and it's a good example because even the streamlined version alpha strike still holds some of the flavor of the crunchy more complex more detailed classic battle tech uh, it has armor it has critic critical hits it has range brackets so you do have to deal with range and terrain but it's simplified to to a level where you can play bigger battles in a much shorter period of time and um and that's really what I'm talking about here is, is one versus the other. And it's, it's hard to say what's better because it is, it's such a subjective thing. I know people who've played Alpha Strike can't stand it. They, they like their crunchy, detailed battle tech. For whatever reasons they have, that's, again, to say it's better, though, is incorrect. Because I know just as many, I've talked to just as many people who've played Alpha Strike and said they'll never go back to Classic because Classic's just too slow and crunchy. So, which is better? I can't answer that question. I like both for what they are. I will play both. I will never play a large battle in Classic ever again because I just do not have a weekend to play a similar-sized battle to what I can play in Alpha Strike in three hours. I'm not going to do it. And... Uh, and there's all kinds of games that can can hit both sides of that that coin. Um, for example, F Warhammer 40K has been along around for years. Many veterans of 40K will tell you Eighth Edition, compared to what they're used to, is rules light, is simple, isn't complicated. I'll tell you right now, compared to other games, it still is. And I'll give you a perfect example: St Star Wars uh, Legion by fantasy flight same scope and size of battle on a 
six by three to a six by four table. Generally speaking, the same number of units, more or less, and the same style of play, more or less. And Legion is way simpler and way more streamlined than 40K is, by far. It's a very simplified, simple, simplified template movement system, like pretty much all uh, Fantasy Flight games for Star Wars. Uh, unit cohesion is easily dealt with because you only move the leader of the unit and then just move the unit with him. Uh, attack is if you have range, you roll your attack dice. Defender rolls defense dice and remove dead units if there are any and go from there. There's usually not much more complicated things than that in a Star Wars Legion game. 40k, on the other hand, characters have special rules, some units have special rules, some weapons have special rules, and it's not that Legion doesn't have special rules, it's an, another one of those situations where, while simpler, it does have some complexities within the game, but at the base of the game, it's fairly simple compared to 40k, making in my opinion, 40k more of a complex game. Then you have other games. Well, I'm actually going to use FFG as, as a, a good basis here because, oh, excuse me, because um, I play all their games. I play X-Wing. I play Legion. I play Armada. I also play Imperial Assault that I, I mentioned earlier. And compared to a number of other games, while I know people who solely play X-Wing or solely play Armada, They'll tell you, oh, well, no, 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 X-Wing and Armada are, are, are very complex. And, and you know, are, they're, they're hard, complicated games. And to them, I go, you've apparently not played other Starfighter or fleet-based games. Because if they had, they wouldn't be saying that. Now, that's not to say X-Wing or Armada don't have complexities within them. All games have some complexity within them, unless you're literally just playing war with a deck of cards they're, they're, you can't get any simpler than that really but in the end compared to some other games and, and I'll throw out a couple of older games versus X-Wing X-Wing at its core is very simple you set your maneuver you use a template to move once everybody's moved you attack and defend as initiative order dictates attack dice versus defense dice there are some other obvious parts to that because you can spend uh, evade tokens or focus tokens, etc. But basically, it's move, attack, defend as necessary. Move, or sorry, move, and then attack and def or defend as necessary. Rinse, repeat. That's it. Now, compared to a game like one I played recently and I shared on the Facebook group called Interceptor, uh, I'm not sure if it's similar to the old Aerotech for Battletech either, because both were by. Fasa. Even the basic game of Interceptor, movement alone is more complicated because they use a thrust system. So your velocity doesn't change unless you burn thrust to change it. You want to change heading, you got to burn thrust to change it. It's not some simple thing that you can just do this and set this maneuver and go. Attacking is a little more complicated because of range brackets and how the skills uh, work. Um, the damaging is, oh, you just take hits or crits. No, you take uh, damage based on a template and using armor diagrams. And then I won't even get into the critical diagram. That's just a mess. It, that really needed a, a streamlined process, even for a, a detailed game like that. And, and the same goes for Armada. Armada is actually, I would say, a little more complicated than X-Wing. But it's still... Well, and even it has a, a another game that is more streamlined than it is. Uh, Star Trek Attack Wing, which is basically X-Wing for Star Trek, using Star Trek ships like the Enterprise or Klingon cruisers or Romulan warbirds. So compared to Armada, Attack Wing is simple fleet, and Armada would be the more complex game. But then you turn around and play a game like Battlespace, also from FASA for Battletech from many years ago, or even uh, something I've never played but had, had heard lots about, the old Starfleet Battles game. And there's another game I have, uh, Star Blazers Fleet Battles. Armada is quite simple by comparison to 
any of those games. Much the same. The maneuvering's different. The maneuvering for those games was a lot more detailed than, say, for Armada. Uh, weapon fire, what can fire, how you fire it, how they do damage, critical hits. It's just such detail in in every aspect of the game by comparison to an Armada. Uh, Armada is much like X-Wing. Is y When you're in a position to attack, you attack. Your opposition doesn't even defend. They use tokens to defend or they take damage to the shields. So it's not even an active defense. You just attack. There are ways to modify attacks. There's ways to modify your movement. And again, by and large, Armada is template-based movement. So it's simpler. Where in these other games, you have to take into account your velocities or how much engine power you have. Or do you have damage to... Can you even make a right turn? Or are you damaged? or And things along those lines. Now, granted, X-Wing, Armada, and Armada both have critical damage that can happen. But again, they're, they're pretty straightforward. Versus a lot of older games that were very rules-heavy by comparison. Um... Now, again, that's not to say there's no complexities in these games. Obviously, there's complexities. Because every ship is different than every other ship. And that's the case in all of these fleet games. Every ship is different from every other ship in one way or another. So you have to know the varieties and, and various types. But really, in the end, games like Alpha Strike for Battletech, X-Wing... When it, in regards to starfighter battles, Armada when it comes to fleet battles, or even simp simpler still, Attack Wing, again, X-Wing for, for larger ships. Those games are pretty simple. Um, and it really did seem, does seem, um, manufacturers are kind of going that way. And it's even, even with um, more historical-based World War II games, you have games like Bolt Action, more rules-heavy, versus games like Flames of War, broader scoped, larger battles, simpler rules. Neither are better... Not One is not better than the other. They're, they're very much geared for what they're supposed to do. And... I'm, one of, I'm someone who's kind of caught in the middle a lot of the time. And... Because now I've, I've covered, you know, a few board games and, and some games in, in war gaming and some role-playing games. And everything I've mentioned, I, I play, except for Starfleet Battles. I've played everything. And I've enjoyed it for what it is. And I know people out there who will disagree with a lot of what I said about some games. They may agree, and vice versa. But in the end, it's always preference. Always, always preference. And I play what I can play when I can play it also why I play probably a dozen different war games because well it's easier find to it's easier to find an opponent that way but it's also dependent on my time if I only have a couple hours I'm going to play something like X-Wing or Attack Wing if I've got all day I'm going to play a game like Interceptor or, or um, something more detail oriented or try to get a couple of games in of something like Armada while simpler is still a more time consuming game just because of the game but in the end it, 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 it's what are you looking for in a game detail or simple and the fact of the matter is one is neither is better than the other never has been never will be and I think more people need to kind of give the other a chance because they might find out they actually like it more than they do or than they think they do anyway. But I, I think I've rambled enough about this. I don't want my episodes to be running on and on and on. But that's kind of where I stand on it. I, I, I'm someone who likes both. That's what I mean when I say I'm kind of stuck in the middle. Um, because I, I enjoy a detailed-oriented game like chess. Um, I, I, I very much enjoy playing chess. But I do play checkers frequently, especially on my phone. Um because it's it's quick. I can get a couple of games in the kill five minutes, not a problem. And in the end, I have fun and get to hang out with friends and meet new people sometimes, depending on what I'm playing. 
but yeah at the end of it all it's well what do you what do you really want and people need to stop saying well you know this game's better than that game because it has more rules or it's more detailed because if you're not looking for detail you're going to think it's crap but and if you're looking for simple or you don't want simple you want detail you're going to think simple games are crap so in the end games are games guys it, it, it's they are what they are and you should be playing to have fun anyway so it really doesn't matter but yeah so uh, if you want leave some comments if not that's fine um, but like where I stand is I like both I play both I enjoy both I play people who like one or the other or both and uh, you know good gaming to everybody you know uh, like play what you like play what you love it doesn't matter if it's detailed or or simple um, my family and I play crazy eights it, just we three or four games of crazy eights after dinner many nights why yeah it's time together it's it's all it's really about so uh what do you prefer let me know in the comments if you want uh if not eh, so be it Every, everybody has their way of letting me know things that's for sure but uh i'll let you go with that so i'm james this has been games according to james thanks for listening and we will talk to you next time